Hello, uh, welcome to your first chapter in A-Level Physics. Um, this chapter will talk about physical quantity and also vectors. But this particular video series will start off with physical quantities first because physics is supposed to measure physical quantity, right? Okay, so we, in physics, if we cannot measure, we don't study, all right? So physical quantity then will be defined as uh, something that we can measure. Okay, it's a quantity that can be measured. So happiness cannot be measured, cannot law. All right. And we have known instruments. For example, we know we can use a ruler to measure the length and also methods. Lah. You know how to use a ruler. I think that one would be like primary school 101. So physical quantity will start off first. And uh, normally physical quantity, physics, people were lazy one. We prefer to not keep writing the same word. So we will use a symbol. For example, length would be L. SI unit here is meter. Everyone already decide to use meter. Besides the Americans. Lah. Anyway, length is measured using a ruler. Just like time is measured using a stopwatch. SI unit here is seconds S. Symbol, you can use lowercase t. You can use t subscript 1. Okay. Temperature, uh, which is a thermometer. SI unit is Kelvin. The symbol here is temperature or t, t or theta. Just like the symbol of length can be x, can be y, can be anything. The next one will be current measured using an ammeter. So the SI unit is ampere, symbol uppercase A. And the symbol for the unit is I. The last one that is more common would be mass measured using a weighing balance. And the SI unit is kilogram kg. Symbol can be lowercase m or uppercase m. So this is the top five that we always use in physics. And the other two that is less popular would be luminous intensity or some of your textbook will call it luminosity. SI unit here is candela, candela, which is C lowercase d. Sometimes we use L, sometimes we use IV. This kind of thing, a very subjective one, okay? So generally, right, the symbol is uh, more flexible. You can use different symbols, okay? But for SI unit, there is no variation. So the last one that you will see in chemistry will be the amount of substance, okay? That we would uh, tend to represent it with lowercase n or uppercase n and with the SI unit mole. So all this symbol for unit is fixed. Ah. Okay, we don't change them anymore. The whole world already agree. All right? But the symbol for the physical quantity is subjective. Okay, so please refer to the question. But the units are fixed. Okay, just like the prefixes are also fixed. So whenever we look at prefix, right, we use prefix for bigger numbers like 10 to the power of 3, 6, 9, and 12, and the symbols will be T, G, M, and lowercase a. So if you notice, right, all the multiples are in terms of 3. 3 times 3, then times another 3 is 6, times another 3 is 9, and another 3 is 12. So we keep multiplying by 1,000, okay? Uh, this is the convention that we are using now. Lah. The scientist has already agreed. We just inherit the convention. You and I, we all inherit the convention. So again, the index will rise to the power of 3. Where I draw the dotted line is 10 to the power of 0. And then all, because all this number is getting bigger, right? So the prefix is all uppercase, tera, giga, mega. But kilo here is lowercase because kilo is a special person. Lah. All right. So the rest, all of this will be smaller. The I, I, I and the O, O, O is smaller. The R, R, R is bigger. Now I feel like I'm teaching kindergarten. A E I O U. Okay, anyway, this kilo is a special child. Huh? Okay, so we give them exception. So you notice that all of this is lowercase. D C M. We have all follow the first letter, but micro cannot take back M law because milli already take M. Huh? So we use the symbol mu. Mu. That Pokemon mu. Alright, nano is N and pico is P. So again, these few ones are a bit special. Huh? Negative 1, negative 2, because centi is divided by 100. But after that, we again go up to the 3. 3, 6, 9, and 12. Okay? So, if we write a physical quantity, right? Example, the mass of the sun. We will represent it with a symbol, let's say big M. And then, we write the value law. The mass of the sun is around 2 times 10 to the power 30 kg. So, the mass of the sun is our physical quantity that we measure. This is the symbol for your physical quantity. So once you define the symbol, you can keep using the symbol again. This is the value or the magnitude 2 times 10 to the power of 3, which means it has 30 zeros. This 10 to the power of 3 is prefix. 
You can represent it with a prefix symbol or you can just put 10 to the power of something. And this kg here would be the symbol for unit. Once again, the symbol for physical quantity is not fixed, but the symbol for unit or units are fixed. Alright, so we talk about base unit, now we're going to talk about derived units, which is a combination of base SI units by multiplication or division. Alright, so for example, let's say now I choose a physical unit that is not base SI, which is power, energy over time. And then, the unit for power is Watt, W. Okay, so unit of energy is Joule, and the unit for time is second, uh, S. But you see, uh, Joule is not base SI, so I need to break Joule down. I need to think of an equation. Energy is FS, because work done, and F is MAS. So I'm going to now slot in the units for MA and S, and then I substitute and simplify. No? So this is the unit for M, this is the unit for A, and this is the unit for S. Okay, divide by S, so you get S negative 3. Alright, and the next point would be homogeneous equation. An equation which is an equation where each term have the same base as our unit. For example, this equation S is ut plus half at squared. I will derive this in chapter 3. So the unit for distance S is meter. The unit for velocity U is ms negative 1. But the unit for T is S. So you simplify this, you get m. Just like the unit for uh, acceleration is ms negative 2. And the unit for time is s square, so you get m again. So you notice all three terms have the same unit. But just because they have the same unit doesn't mean it's correct. Uh. So all correct equation must be homogeneous. Okay? But not all homogeneous equation are correct. I, uh, all physics teacher must be good in physics. But not all people who are good in physics are good at teaching physics. It's two different things. If I want to teach that thing, I must be good at it. But just because I'm good at it, I am not necessarily can teach it. Same idea. So all physical equation that is correct must be homogeneous. But not all homogeneous equations are correct. Because you see, uh, this half, I can put another number here that is unitless, like 8, uh, 6, uh, 4. Uh, okay? So that's all. Uh. So that's all for this topic. For number 7, right, we will only do this when we do paper 3. Lah, okay? So when we got lab, then we can draw table and graph together. Then only it will make sense. So that's all for this video. And I will see you in the next one when we talk about vectors. Try some past years. Bye-bye.